and thanks for making the time to speak to us. Good morning and good morning to your viewers. I don't know if you are listening in to that conversation with the Minister of Energy. The briefing yesterday comes amid geopolitical tensions stemming from the Russian-Ukraine conflict. Even Minister Mantashe, in his address to the Africa Energy in Daba, spoke about these impacts. How has this development manifested in your preparations? So it's a recent development, uh, but it's something we have to think about carefully. I think it makes us focus on um, certain things, or it, it, it affirms our focus on certain things. We've always said that the base of investment is domestic investment. Uh, it's important that local investors um, are showcased and encouraged, incentivized to invest. And a conflict like this reminds us why our fundamentals have to be right domestically. Um, there's an important role that foreign investment plays. Globalization is important, but one also has to have a certain degree of self-sufficiency. So we will be showcasing a lot of um, domestic uh, in investment in that regard. I think it's also a reminder um, of our general uh, economic growth story um, that we also have to uh, uh, be mindful that the recovery is not going to be easy. Um, you know, we were coming out of pandemic, we we're already seeing some green shoots uh, in terms um, of, of um, GDP, um, some recovery and employment, but there was always the prospect of risks such as this setting us back. And so it, we have to have a resilient economy that is able to sustain um, those shocks. It is unfortunate um, that this is happening um, at this stage, uh, but we have to constantly uh, be aware um, of the risks um, that we face in the global economy. It's also unfortunate that um, some of the structures that bring that keep the global economy together, like the payment system, um, has, has become politicized in this conflict. Um, and so I think going forward, we're going to have to, be think, to think carefully about how we ensure that some of the plumbing um, the logistics, the financial architecture um, of the global economy doesn't get drawn into conflict uh, in the way that this conflict threatens to do. Yeah, it will be very difficult to avoid. But yesterday we were told of progress on three projects. Which projects are these? And can you give us a holistic picture of the investments that have reached South Africa since the beginning and as a result of the investment conference? Yes. So the minister highlighted some um, uh, projects um, just as an illustration of the kinds of the diversity and the depth that we see. So he mentioned um, a, a food processing um, investment into foods. That is one of the largest processing um, plants in the Southern Hemisphere. It produces packaged uh, vegetables, packaged uh, products for the major retailers in South Africa and also globally. He highlighted Mercedes-Benz. Uh, which expanded uh, its initial um, uh, investment uh, into South Africa uh, and has uh, commissioned uh, its plant and is now one of the um, largest producers um, of, of the uh, C-Class series that, that we produce in South Africa. Um, he also pointed to other automotives um, like Ford, but also the fact that we are a diverse uh, economy. So in manufacturing, for instance, pharmaceuticals has become a very important sector and Aspen, um, was able to expand its anesthetics uh, plant. So we gained some self-sufficiency where we used to import all our anesthetics. And of course, in COVID, uh, during COVID times, they've been able to expand their capacity for vaccine production. They started um, at the lower end of the value chain with just fill and finish. And now they're expanding their capacity to go all the way um, to also working with active ingredients um, in the country. You were speaking earlier about the importance of local investment. What opportunities for investment exist in the South African economy and how can we bring local investors alive to these? So, you know, it's a, it's a whole range. So starting from the primary industries like mining, um, agriculture, we're going to have panels that really zoom in on that. Yesterday at the briefing, we had Anglo-American, for instance, talk about the cutting edge work in traditional mining, but also going into the hydrogen economy um, and how that's going to revolutionize uh, mining. Uh, in agriculture, we know that we've had bumper export seasons uh, in recent times. And so we're going to have a panel to say, how do we make this sustainable? And how do we tap into new global markets, risks uh, notwithstanding? On the digital side, we have Vodacom, 
um, also at, at the uh, press conference, talking about the digital economy uh, more broadly, and also some of the intersections between the digital economy and the creative sector. Uh, we're starting to see, you know, the, we are seeing the rise of streaming services, the importance of digital content creators, particularly through the pandemic. And so that too is coming across um, as an important new area where with supportive policy um, in broadband development, uh, in, in uh, you know, uh, activating the digital dividend, we can tap into those new sectors of the economy. So as always, the, the conference will look at new opportunities, but also look at the policy side of things in terms of how is government creating the policies um, that enable all of these uh, investments, you know, from mining, manufacturing um, services, how government is, is um, engaging in policy that frees up these uh, industries and also make sure that we lower the costs uh, of doing business in the country. Talking about supportive policy, one of the companies touted to bring massive investment in the telecommunication space, Marafones, has been in the headlines for not taking off. They've blamed the pandemic and lack of uptake. What really happened here and are there efforts to revive this project? So we went into this knowing that not all the projects um, are going to be successful. So for instance, if we look at the overall pipeline, we have 45 that are complete, 57 that are in construction, but we also have 15 um, that have been put on hold or that have um, you know, faced some, some level of challenge. The general approach that we have uh, with this is that, A, we try to work with the company in as far as is possible, if it's something policy related. You know, for instance, there were some re renewable uh, projects um, that were not coming on stream because of certain financing conditions, um, and, and we're able to, to, to work um, in, in that sector to, to unlock those. But in some instances, it's actually nothing that government can do. It's just market conditions um, that any investor takes a risk when they enter into a market. And if, and if that doesn't work out, um, uh, there isn't uh, that much that can be done. Now, specifically with the case of Mara, um, you know, there are various financial institutions that are exposed to it, both in the private sector, uh, but also in the public sector. And the IDC for itself has come out to talk about how they're working with the company um, to find um, to wind down and and to to you know to meet the contractual obligations um, as as they, they they were said, but it's always unfortunate um, when uh, an investment um, doesn't work out. The state can do some things um, to enable uh, investments to be successful, but also market conditions and, and um, market demand will also play an important role. So just give us a sense, what are the legal or environment or otherwise challenges that have to be dealt with as you try to bring investors on board? Well, they are various. So, I mean, if I think um, of, you know, um, examples um, that come to mind of uh, projects um, that, that have seen um, challenges, you know, before we were clear, for instance, as a country, that we were going to allow for a healthy self-generation market uh, in energy and that we were committed to future uh, bidding rounds uh, in terms of renewable energy. Um, there were issues um, that, that um, th there were projects that didn't come to the fore or there were companies in mining and in other industries that wanted um, to invest in this area but that simply didn't or were very slow uh, in, in bringing those um, commitments to, to market. But once it was, once the policy path was clear, we saw gold fields, we saw Anglo American now opening up and, and taking up those opportunities. So I think that, that's what I mean when I say, you know, there, there's policy clarity that can be provided that opens up. There have been investors, um, foreign investors, who don't fully appreciate and understand our black economic empowerment policies. So we've had to work with them and take them through them. And once they understand, the investment moves um, at a faster pace. Yeah. So just um, finally... You know, they, would be, they would be threatening to pull out. They would be slowing things down. But once government does that, um, you know, it, it proceeds. So those are the kinds of things um, that can be done. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, if, a, if the business case is not holding up, um, then that happens in business. And, and as long as it's not um, at an excessive rate, um, that's, that's how it is. Okay, I have to let you go, but just uh, give us a sense of preparedness as you're expecting a thousand delegates in person. Uh, what can we expect? What can South Africans expect? 
So we expect some um, high profile investors reminding us, both local and international, reminding us of the investment case for South Africa. It's one thing for us as government to say, but for business to say, this is why we invest uh, in South Africa. We're also going to see progress on previous commitments that have been made um, by investors in terms of just you know bringing this pipeline um, to life. We're also going to um, have the president opening um, the, the conference and laying out um, the policy path for the year and actually unpacking and giving a bit more detail to some of the structural reforms that he talked about when he um, spoke uh, in, in SONA. He will also touch on the socioeconomic aspects and the local economic aspects um, of investment, particularly uh, rooting it in the district development model, because it's important that we always link investment to job creation to local economic development. And of course, we will see new commitments um, of investments being announced. Tudor Makaya, thank you so much for setting the scene for us as we expect uh, that uh, SA Investment Conference to start later.